been sold a bill of goods. Automated cameras out of sync with school zone flashers. It's actually a Trojan horse. One of the most common complaints so far is the amount of time it takes between the time of the violation and the time of receiving the ticket. A golden goose. We didn't find hundreds. We found thousands. It's revenue generator. It's a cash cow. Disguised in school safety language. Follow the money. I spoke to Red Speed. The state uh, passed a law allowing it to happen. Yeah. That's why that that's why they've come in. They started in Georgia first. To the IT now, hundreds of drivers in one metro Atlanta town will soon be reimbursed for speeding tickets issued by cameras. Five years ago, a new state law made it legal for police to set up automated cameras in school speed zones and send tickets through the mail. Now, a Fox 5 IT team investigation finds those cameras weren't functioning properly in one Clayton County city, resulting in drivers receiving tickets they didn't deserve. IT team reporter Johnny Edwards discovered the malfunction and took the evidence to City Hall. John that's right, Courtney. A few months ago, a woman complained to the Fox 5 I team that she was ticketed outside an elementary school based on the wrong speed limit. She said when she tried to point this out to a judge, he blew her off and ordered her to pay up anyway. We looked into her claims and found not only did she have a point, but she wasn't the only driver affected. Elise Woodhouse thought she had a good chance of beating two speeding tickets she got in the mail. This is the camera that keeps taking my tag. Charging her with speeding past Souter Elementary School. <laughs> After all, she had both perception and reality on her side. I think this is very important because it says when flashing and it was not flashing at 831. So I was going 36. But when she took her case in front of Jonesboro Municipal Court Chief Judge Charles Wood, neither perception nor reality mattered. The two tickets, one from April and one from May, said she was speeding above a 25 mile per hour speed limit at around 830 in the morning. The fines, $125 a piece. This is my way to work every morning. The school lights don't blink at 8.30. They kind of stop around 8 o'clock, and I have photos that I went by and I took. So technically, the speed limit was 35 at this time. I just have to go based on what the, the documents show. And so basically, for that reason, I'm going to find you liable for these two wow. citations. Wow. OK. Welcome to the world of automated school speed zone enforcement. Trial attorney Lester Tate says the system denies drivers the basic right to cross-examine their accuser. You've heard before maybe the term highway robbery. This is sort of school zone robbery, and unfortunately, it's been legalized by the legislature. Drivers must be going at least 11 miles over the speed limit to be ticketed. For drivers who are paying attention, the way the speed limit works on this stretch of road is clear. The sign on top says the speed limit is 25 miles per hour when flashing. If it's not flashing, the sign right next to it says the speed limit is 35 miles per hour. You're sure when you drove through here, you did not see the lights blink? I'm positive. I'm positive. Okay. I would have slowed down. According to Clayton County's flasher schedule, she's right. The lights weren't supposed to be flashing when she drove through. Then we dug deeper. We obtained data on all tickets issued by Jonesboro School speed cameras since the beginning of 2023, totaling more than 17,000 citations. In total, the Fox 5 I team found more than 450 tickets issued in Jonesboro this year alone to drivers who weren't going fast enough to be ticketed under the law. 456 incorrect tickets. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. And that's just this year. There could be more if we went back further. There you wow. go. Imagine if you hadn't uncovered this. Frustration continues for drivers ticketed by those speed cameras set up in school zones with efforts now underway to change the law allowing them in the first place. Since the Fox 5 I team first exposed a glitch that caused one city to issue hundreds of false citations, we've heard from drivers all over the area telling Telling us they're fed up with tickets that benefit private companies. Fox 5 IT reporter Johnny Edwards has a story on some calls for major reforms. Johnny. That's right, Courtney. Supporters say these cameras keep school kids safe. But just this week, Georgia lawmakers met to discuss changes to the school speed zone camera law. All while class action lawsuits take aim at the business model where private companies profit off the tickets.
automated school zone speed cameras. They wait. They watch. If one gets you, you can't reason with it. It doesn't give mercy. A first offense, about $75 to $100. The big thing is they got the fines low enough, and they tell you it won't go on your record, no points. Just send us your money. A decade ago, Augusta attorney John Bell successfully took on private probation. Now, he's taking on privatized traffic enforcement in two class action lawsuits aimed at camera contractors, Red Speed and Blue Line Solutions, who manage cameras for police departments in Metro Atlanta and beyond. They are out of state, private for profit companies interested only in how much money can they extract from the citizens of Georgia. Companies often taking about a 30% cut of each ticket paid. Bell says if either of his cases succeed, the current privatized system would become illegal. Bell alleges in the lawsuits the companies aren't police, but they pose as police when they mail citations, with Blue Line even using the company's Tennessee address. The lawsuits alleging, quote, wrongful impersonation of law enforcement and agencies. And I think it's offensive. There is a reason we have law enforcement that are elected or serve under elected people who are responsible for their duties. The lawsuits even invoke Georgia's racketeering law. Both companies have denied the allegations in court filings saying the 2018 law allows what they do. But state lawmakers have also been hearing complaints, and even faster changes could come through bills pending at the state capitol, including one that would reform the school cameras and another proposal that would dismantle the systems completely. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed. One bill would throw out the 2018 law. The House Motor Vehicles Committee approving it unanimously Tuesday. We have been sold a bill of goods. It's actually a Trojan horse, a golden goose revenue generator disguised in school safety language. I think finding a balance is the right answer. A bill passed in the House last year, now carried by Senator John Albers, would require school zone signs to be uniform throughout the state. And cameras could only write speeding tickets when orange lights are flashing. Secondarily, it's going to make sure that no camera company is benefiting financially from the amount of tickets they write. It's a flat fee. We never want this to be anything more than protecting students. We don't ever want it to be a money grab. Now that proposal to allow tickets only when lights are flashing would probably clear up a whole lot of confusion. Many drivers have told us they don't understand how they can be ticketed in the middle of a school day when children are inside. One of the most common complaints so far is the amount of time it takes between the time of the violation and the time of receiving the ticket. In one case, it's been over a month. Well, if, if there had been an actual officer there, I would have gotten the ticket that day. And I realize with cameras and all of that, that's not possible. But within a week or two, I would think would be a little bit more reasonable because I can't remember a month ago where I was. I mean, it took me time to think, wait, where was I? When was this? What was going on? Well, if you got a speeding ticket from an automated school zone camera on Memorial Drive in Atlanta, and a lot of people did, you could get a refund. It turns out the cameras wrongfully sent more than 4,000 citations to Georgia drivers. This is the third time the Fox 5 I-Team has uncovered faulty speeding tickets in Metro Atlanta. I-Team reporter Johnny Edwards getting people their money back <laughs> says blinking school zone lights on a busy part of Memorial Drive confused drivers about the speed limit there. That's right, Russ, and that's all it takes to foul up these systems, automated cameras out of sync with school zone flashers. The question is, why did Atlanta school officials allow the cameras to go on issuing bogus tickets when they knew about the problem for months? For drivers trying to obey the speed limit, these signs are kind of important. When they blink, I pay attention every day when I drive through here, those lights. And when they don't. If that light had been flashing, I'm fairly confident I would have slowed down. For seven months, the flashing school zone lights on this busy Atlanta road near Drew Charter School misled drivers into exceeding the speed limit. 
right before they passed one of these, automated cameras that started ticketing in September. The Fox 5i team found more than 4,000 citations issued by mail for speeding above 25, when the signs said 35. My house is about a half a mile that way. James Murphy, who lives nearby, received two tickets that way, and his wife got one. They shouldn't be raking in money from dozens of cars driving down the road when there's no light blinking signaling the speed limit is 25. Here's the problem. These lights should flash at the start of the school day until 8.30 in the morning, then come on again at the end of the school day until 5. But drivers told the Fox 5i team they cut off around 8.15 in the morning, and we witnessed one not flashing at 4.45 p.m., creating two 15-minute windows when thousands of drivers receive citations they shouldn't have. At this point, you're here for the uh, school zone um, speed camera cases. Murphy took his fight to municipal court. He wasn't the only one. The sign wasn't flashing. I'm, I'm not the only person, you know, here that witnessed the same thing. It wasn't flashing. It was about 4.40 something in the afternoon. Judge Christopher Portis watching Murphy's video proof. The lights are supposed to blink until 5 p.m. And as we see, they are not blinking. And tossing all their citations out. At the very least, that's confusing. Uh, so I'm going to uh, close this case. South Georgia lawmaker Chaz Cannon said he plans to reintroduce a bill in next year's legislative session to ban automated school zone speed cameras. Three jurisdictions now we've found this happening in. What does that tell you about this system? Well, I think that's the underlying question is, is are these cameras really for safety or are they for revenue? I think in this case, it, it, it kind of leads more towards the it's about revenue. Well, if you received a speeding ticket from an automatic camera, you might be getting your money back. The I-Team has discovered another city issued citations based on the wrong speed limit in school zones. Last year, we told you how the Jonesboro Police Department gave out bogus tickets. Our investigation got drivers $76,000 in refunds. Well, now the Fox 5 I-Team reporter Johnny Edwards has found the same thing happening one city over but worse, Johnny. That's right, Russ. In Jonesboro, we found hundreds of questionable tickets. But right next door in Riverdale, we didn't find hundreds. We found thousands. The street signs say one thing. In my opinion, the flashing signal says 25 when flashing. And then if it's not flashing, I'm thinking the speed limit is 35. But these traffic enforcement cameras play by their own set of rules. A Fox 5 I-Team analysis discovered more than 6,000 speeding violations mailed to drivers who shouldn't have been ticketed at all. All of it due to six cameras clocking drivers who passed Riverdale High and Riverdale Middle Schools. Initially, this is presented as a good idea, as a good way to slow the people down and create safer school zones. If we're going to engage in constant problems, do we need to revisit the idea of is it really working? The Fox 5i team discovered the same problem last year in Jonesboro, involving cameras managed by the same company, Red Speed. Here's the issue. To get a ticket when these signs are flashing, by law, you have to be going at least 11 miles over that 25 speed limit. But many drivers got ticketed as if the lights were flashing, when they clearly were not. The speed limit should have been 35. It's 9.05, <laughs> the light is not flashing, and I'm doing 36 miles per hour, and I got this in the mail. This driver, Ann Owens, warned the city about the problem early last year, telling city council she received multiple tickets on Lamar Hutchison Parkway for going just over 35. Once again, after 9 a.m., when the lights were off. I got another one in the mail, then another and another and another, till I got five more in the mail. And uh, each time I came through the zone, the light not flashing, I'm doing uh, 36, 38, and I couldn't understand why was I getting tickets. These tickets are $130 a piece. According to the chief, the problem in Riverdale may be that the cameras are programmed according to this schedule, which is printed on some street signs. 
And these times don't line up with the times that the flashers actually flash, which is set by the county's transportation department. So when do the lights blink? We checked with Clayton County Transportation and we checked the flashers themselves. They go on and off according to this schedule. I got 859. The chief even saw for himself. Oh, there it goes. There it went. There Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock a.m. Nine o'clock. Yet we found thousands of drivers wrongly ticketed after that time, after the speed limit went back to 35. We estimate this discrepancy has affected more than 5,600 drivers and resulted in more than a half a million dollars collected in potentially invalid tickets. We only looked at data up to early January, so there are likely many more. Red Speed gets a 35% cut of every violation paid. And is it impertinent to point out that, given this 35% that you've mentioned, that the company stands to benefit from the mistake? With the lady who got multiple tickets, that, that adds up, the amount you get charged for. Well, she got her tickets dismissed, but yeah. a lot of people we found got multiple tickets that did not get them dismissed. And mm -hmm. a lot of these folks, just like with Jonesboro, don't even know this is happening because the ticket is such a low amount. It's sort of a nuisance and you just pay it and move on. And uh, not everyone can do the research that we've done here. George Worrell opens letter after letter. So this was $150. This is from 2022. I just opened it. Citations for speeding in the city of South Fulton. Well, if I dug through all of this, I promise you I probably could find like 15, 20 more of these. I would say I've gotten at least maybe 40. 40? 40. The tickets aren't from South Fulton's police department, but a private company called Blue Line Solutions, based hundreds of miles away in Tennessee, which operates these speed detection cameras in this city's school zones. And before you know it, you're caught. Since 2019, he's paid thousands of dollars in camera citations, civil penalties, which do not impact driver's licenses or insurance. The local pastor and father of two confesses he's likely guilty of speeding for some, but not all. I, I understand the, the balance of children's safety, but I believe we got to find like an equilibrium or a symmetry with child safety and not exploiting taxpaying citizens. According to city records, South Fulton drivers pay $21 million in camera fines, more than any municipality in the state. The city's contract with Blue Line shows the company receives 35%. According to that math, the camera operator collected $7 million. Atlanta News First investigates asked Blue Line about our analysis, but it did not respond. Hey. hey, how you doing, sir? How's it going? Good. Keith Meadows is the city's police chief who advocated for the cameras. He points to this traffic study that shows since the cameras were installed in 2019, the number of speeding vehicles in school zones has dropped more than 90 percent. While citations have decreased, the city still collects on average hundreds of thousands of dollars in citation revenue a month. But at the end of the day, we believe that um, it's resulted in our school zones being a much safer place. Who conducted the traffic study showing the dramatic drop in speeding? Blue Line Solutions. No one accuses it of altering numbers, but Blue Line is the same camera company that stands to financially benefit by continuing to operate in this city. Is that appropriate? Should the city be doing its own traffic study? I don't have an issue with the city doing our own study, but at the end of the day, we, LIDAR has been determined to be the most effective uh, technology that exists um, when it comes to speeding. Technology that isn't foolproof, like the city of Jonesboro, which works with Red Speed, another camera operator. It refunded drivers $76,000 after the camera issued tickets for the wrong speed limit. Barrow County officials refunded drivers $721,000 after posting a school zone speed limit sign in the wrong location. And Blue Line Solutions now faces a class action lawsuit alleging it collects unauthorized revenue and excessive processing fees. Blue Line filed a motion to dismiss the lawsuit claiming the litigation should be focused on municipalities that employ it to enforce traffic laws. It, it's, it's a cash cow. 
State Representative Dewey McLean supports banning the cameras or reforming the 2018 law that gives cities the authority to use the cameras. So we've got, we as legislators got to do a better job. We, we need to regulate this to say exactly when and why and how. When lawmakers approved the legislation, McCain says it was pitched to protect children. According to the National Highway Safety Administration, pedestrian fatalities in Georgia have steadily increased since the cameras were installed. The number of school-aged children deaths nearly unchanged. Since lawmakers approved the cameras, Atlanta News First Investigates uncovered Georgia municipalities have collected more than $112 million in revenue from the cameras. Yes, I voted for it. Hook, line, and sinker. Hook, line, and sinker. Now, five years later, I thought, look at the, the data and statistics and, and things of that nature. I, I wonder. I've heard some state legislators talk about getting rid of the school cameras. Well, what's the alternative? Hiring police officers and... 16 police officers in every school zone. Then the narrative is going to be um, they're running speed traps in South Fulton. Well, they're already saying that now with the cameras. Right. Speeders in school zones beware. Some cities in South Florida could get speed detection cameras to automatically issue tickets. The owner of the car would get the $100 fine, but no points against their license. Between school zones, slowing down drivers with cameras. They'll hit speeders with automated tickets for going 10 miles an hour over speed limits as kids go to school, sit in class, and head home. City leaders agreed to buy speed monitors. They're vetting vendors and could use it whenever they decide, thanks to a bipartisan Florida law that, as of July 1st, allows school zone photo enforcement. While their plan won't replace police, it could turn a profit with 60,000 people on this city's main roads. That money would only buy crossing guards and valuable lessons for drivers. On July 1st, a state law went into effect legalizing speed detection cameras when they're installed in school zones. The law gives counties and municipalities in Florida the option to use them or not. The village is very early on in the process, but has already signed an agreement with the camera technology company, Red Speed. What it does is it allows us as a municipality to install speed enforcement cameras within our school zones and issue notice of violations to people who are exceeding the speed limit by at least 10 miles an hour, so 11 or over, um, during school hours, actually a half an hour before school starts, throughout the day while school is in session, and then a half an hour after school ends. Once these cameras are installed, anyone driving 10 miles per hour over the speed limit would automatically receive an $100 ticket, but no points on their license. There will be a 30-day warning period to inform the public once the initiative goes into effect in any city or county. In about five weeks yes. since the cameras went live, you've issued over 1,300 citations. 1,300 tickets. Yes. Does that blow you away? It did. I didn't think it would be that high, honestly. I you warned people yes. for about a month, yes. and clearly they still didn't get the message. I figured the warning would have sent a message, and hopefully they would have you know, curtailed that behavior. Evidently, that didn't do the job. I think once they get hit in the wallet, in the pocketbook, people are going to realize $100 is a lot of money. And let me tell you, some of my cops have had tickets. Some, some of our city crews have had tickets. Elected officials have tickets. They all got to pay. And, Chief, aren't these drivers going through here pretty much the same drivers who do this every single yeah, day? Yeah, most, most people take the same route. We've had one gentleman get five tickets in two days. What does it say to you that you had a guy <laughs> speeding through here in two days five times? It sounds like a guy that's, that doesn't know what's going on. Follow the money. We hear all these Facebook groups following money. Follow the money. Several days later. One week later. I wanted to bring up the topic for the school zone uh, speed cameras. I would like to be the first city in Broward. I was told by one of the representatives we still can be. Um, but I wanted to know if, you know, obviously we can't make a decision on this, but I, I'd like to know if there's consensus to ask Kale to kind of formally start that process of looking at companies and coming back with 
maybe some uh, some feedback. But I know that you know I I'm a huge fan of it. The one that I spoke to, Red Speed, has already conducted some of the surveys. They're doing uh, traffic studies on their dime. The state uh, passed a law allowing it to happen. Yeah. That's why that they, that's why they've come in. They started in Georgia first. And then the state legislature and it took effect in July. That's why it's it's so new. And uh, it would be during it would be a half hour before school like starts through the day to a half an hour after school ends. So, but it's only in the areas school where there's school zones. Atlantic Boulevard. And, well, and I don't want to dive into too many details because I'd like to get more information. Right. But just for the gist of it, it's not like a red light camera where it's a gotcha where you stop. It's a Sunday at two in the morning and right. no one's on the road and you do what's called a California. It's technically it's not stopping, but it's a gotcha and they get you. This isn't that if you're going one mile an hour over, it's not going to get you. And I'm not going to disclose that threshold, but it's correct. A, you're right. You, you, if you're caught on the camera, you're speeding. That's it's, right. it's several miles an hour. You know, yes. you, you're, you're, you're caught. And, you know, I'd be the first to tell you if it was citywide, I, I would oppose it. But. Who, who could honestly be upset if they got a ticket for speeding in a school zone? The person who got the ticket, but everybody, but I don't even everybody, think everybody, everybody, but everybody else is protected. Correct. Several months later. Follow the money, follow the money. Follow the money.